This is the Bob Davis Podcast YouTube channel. And I said I would put up videos every time I did a new podcast, audio podcast, which I'm going to do. The podcasts are available at thebobdavispodcast.com. Give you a little bit of background about why I'm here and why I'm doing this this way. Uh, I appeared with my friends in Quartzsite, Arizona on Peter Santanello's channel uh, and a, po a show, you know, a video about uh, off-the-grid life in, uh, in Arizona and Quartzsite. We had a really good time. And uh, I really appreciated Peter uh, basically giving us all a break. And we've all had a lot of input to our emails and our uh, websites and, and whatnot. And I've been podcasting for a long time, since 2009. And I have a lot of podcasts, 1,098. And he said, you've got to start doing some videos. You need to start putting some new videos up. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to activate the channel. So the last podcast I did, podcast 1,098, is entitled Activating My YouTube Channel. So I am doing that. This is the truck that was in uh, the desert. It's up here in Wisconsin in the shed. The shed is uh, a place that my father-in-law, who just passed away, uh, used to do a lot of his work. And we did a lot of stuff up here. We helped him out an awful lot. And it's up in the middle of nowhere up here in Wisconsin, the farm district. And there's boats and cars and vehicles and stuff in here. I am ensconced here sort of as double insulation because when I got here at the 1st of April, it was still pretty cold up here. In fact, we had snow uh, at that time. And so I've been in the shed because it's double insulation. For people who think, oh, you just did a thing and you were in this beautiful cabin. The cabin is right down the road here. And uh, I don't sleep in the cabin. I come out here every morning about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning after I do all my television viewing and podcasts or whatever it is that I'm doing. And I sleep in this vehicle in this shed. Eventually, we will take the ambulance down to the lakefront. Uh, the ground is, I'm going to talk about how the ground never really got soft. We never got the permafrost uh, this year for winter. And, and that's kind of a fun little story. I'll talk about that. But basically, I sleep in this vehicle pretty much everywhere. So I'm always in, in nomad mode and I sleep in this vehicle and this is home. So whether I'm in a Walmart parking lot or a Love's truck stop or, you know, in a uh, Cracker Barrel parking lot or down at the lake, this is my home. So I stay in here, regardless of how luxurious the place that I'm staying is, in case you saw the last video, which you probably did. If you're coming in from the Peter Santanello channel, uh, there's another video up called How to Live in an Ambulance or Live Life in an Ambulance on the Road or something to that effect. And of course, the one off the grid that got so much response. And, 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 and I talked about that in the most recent podcast called Activating My YouTube Channel. I did it so that my podcast listeners would know that I had activated um, my YouTube channel. I've had these two channels for a while. I've used them for, for different things. And uh, I decided, well, you know, if I'm going to do one video, in for a penny, in for a pound, I may as well start. I used to always say, because I'm an audio guy and I'm a perfectionist, hey, I'm going to do videos, but I'm going to get a good camera and I'm going to get an editor and, you know, I want to have good audio and all this other stuff. And then Peter was just like, you got to put videos up. So guess what? We're doing what I didn't want to do, which is to put videos up from my iPhone to YouTube. But it gives me an opportunity to... Uh, do some additional content. So whenever I finish a podcast, there's always additional content that uh, I didn't get to for whatever reason. And I forget, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of these podcasts, stream of consciousness. I forget what I was talking about and I forget to include something or something will get edited out for whatever reason. This is an opportunity to put some content in uh, that's a little bit different from the auto podcast. So if you're an audio podcast listener and you come to this channel, you might get a little something different and vice versa. And the, I started out by saying one of the things I've noticed from comments is people just don't understand the difference between an audio podcast and a YouTube channel. I don't consider YouTube channels podcast. This isn't a podcast. You can certainly, you don't have to look at me. You can, you know, turn, you can turn your, your phone upside down and just lay there or walk, sit there and listen to it as a podcast. Um, or you can just download a podcast and listen to just audio only. So this is where we get into this whole production where people want to see where you are and they want to see more about everything and where you are and they want you to, you want to, it's television. 
except I'm not gonna use it that way initially, and, and uh, I'm gonna use it basically to say, look, there's a new audio podcast. It's available at the thebobdavispodcast.com right off the page. It's available at iTunes. It's available at Google Podcasts. It's available at Spotify. And you can find it through summer edition of the Bob Davis Podcast. I will also tell you that there's a lot of Bob Davises. So there's a couple of guys doing podcasts that are named Bob Davis. One's a preacher. The other guy has a car dealership someplace down in Texas. And there's probably more after that. So you got to enter the Bob Davis Podcasts. And that's the URL right back there for the Bob Davis Podcast. It's on the side of my truck. Uh, I did the, uh, the, the podcast about reactivating my channel where I did all of this sort of in depth, explained why. And one of the things I talked about was how podcasts are very one to one and they differ from YouTube channels because these, you know, you're shooting video. So you feel like you are talking to more than one person. Whereas with, with audio, you really are talking to person, one person, one at a time. One of the things I've noticed on YouTube channels is that, uh, People shout because the camera's way over there. Or they shout because the, you know, the, the camera's out there and the people are out there and so they shout. And you don't have to shout. This is why I like podcasts because the communication is very one-to-one. -one. So you can be very, very quiet. You don't have to be shouting. And uh, I, I really like that about podcasting. On the other hand, the response on YouTube is so much, um, so much more and this is a tremendous alternative to um, social media. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, YouTube is social media to a certain degree, but I'm talking about Facebook and, and other types of, aside from Instagram, social media channels where the response is just a negative experience or it just lays there. YouTube isn't like that, so... Uh, it, it's a good suggestion to use YouTube. So that was one of the things I talked about. Then I got into the stuff that we were talking about uh, in the desert with Peter. I mentioned that Peter's wife edits uh, his videos and she really put her heart and soul into in off-the-grid living because she was so um, taken with that, uh, that uh, uh, concept. She's European. She's from the Ukraine. There's obvious reasons why people from the Ukraine, as well as the rest of Europe right now, really, and Europeans in general, have always been fascinated with the American Southwest, but especially these days with uh, the difficulties. I think the, the desert and nomad life in general represents something greater than just freedom to them because it's a it's almost like a dream to come out to the desert and and hang out and 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 do stuff. And so I really appreciated what she did. I appreciated her editing. I noticed the editing even before he told me that she edited it and does all her editing. I really appreciated what they did and thank you Peter because it's a great video. And I appreciate you know when somebody has passion for something like that and they they put their their heart and soul into the work, it shows. And I think that's really important. And I think there's a lot of people uh, these days who are enthralled with the idea of nomad life for a lot of reasons. I'm a nomad. I started traveling in 2014 off and on. I wasn't a nomad then, but I lived in this truck going back to 2014 and 2015. I got this in like February of 2014 and took my first trip shortly thereafter. It didn't have, you know, there was no, there was no in electricity inside. Um, there were a lot of mechanical problems that I didn't even know about that I've discovered, uh, over the years. So it was, it was a learning experience and there's been a learning curve. And I traveled coast to coast, border to border in different trips, covering news stories like the pipeline protest in North uh, Dakota and some of the, uh, caucus campaigns in South Carolina and Iowa and so forth. And visiting friends all over the country for years before I kept coming back and saying, why am I coming home? This is just stupid. Why am I paying rent? What's the point? And uh, I, I literally got rid of everything. Gave it away, burned it, or sold it. Emptied my apartment, cleaned it up, drove away in October of 2020 to uh, basically be a nomad. And I didn't even know that's what you, I really didn't even know that that's what it was called when uh, I did that in 2020. I just did it because I felt that uh, I wanted to change the basis of my content. I wanted to repot myself. 
instead of uh, doing pol uh, politics, and also that I had learned this, um, I had this experience traveling that was really just euphoric, and I knew that this is what I wanted permanently. And so I changed my content to travel content because I think the, the and I say it in the podcast, I think the whole political, uh, social commentary stuff has just plumbed. I mean, it, there's really nothing more to be said and I don't even need to say that anymore. I don't even to say, need to say or want to say that I've changed my content because why? It, it, you know, it does, is that really uh, uh, relevant to, to, to the conversations we're having? Uh, and pursuant to that, I'm getting a lot of questions about, well, what's an LTVA? Because we were at a long-term visitor area from uh, Bureau of Land Management. How does this work? How much does it cost to be a nomad? Uh, where's that campground and, and a lot of specific questions about how do you do this and what do you do about this and so forth. So I'm going to, I did say, and, and, and I think I did say in the podcast, but I, I've said it more than once and I'm going to continue to say it. Um, I don't, I'm not going to tell you how to do this. I'm not, and I'll tell you why in a second. I'm not going to tell you what the best battery is. I'm not going to tell you, you know, what kind of a power station to get. Uh, I mean, obviously if I get, if I get advertising clients and they want me to show stuff or do something, that's fine. Campulance man is your guy for that because he really understands how all that stuff goes together. He has a big old, uh, you know, seven, three diesel ambulance and he's done amazing things in there. I haven't done anything in there. If you look at the, the life in an ambulance video that Peter did, you'll see that I, I, I have done nothing because quite frankly, we could clean this up and put it back into service as an ambulance. The lights still work and <clears throat> all of that. So I just don't, I don't see why people buy ambulances and rip everything out and turn them into RVs. I've kept as, all the systems and they all still work in the ambulance. And I really like that. You know, I, I'd rather have that than an RV. It's weird, but it's a great platform. And that's the reason I have it anyway. Uh, I have never been one in my life to learn by having people tell me things. I learn experientially by doing, and I make a lot of mistakes. And much to the chagrin of some of my friends, uh, I, don't, I don't watch YouTube to find out what battery to put in my truck. I don't watch YouTube, YouTube to find out how to convert uh, the foam bed that I put on the floor into a hydraulic bed or whatever. I don't... Uh, I don't, and I don't share that stuff. I'm not going to tell you the best routes to take to get to this place or the other. I don't know how much it costs to be a nomad. I just know that I have a certain amount of money I can spend each month and then I'm done. People come into this with different resources. Some people have a lot of money and they have great RVs and they have a great experience. And some of us who are hardcore, uh, you know, we don't uh, look at my clothes. You know, I'm not out here uh, making a fortune. Uh, and if I did, it would go into a new rig or a better rig or updating this rig mechanically, not necessarily the rest of it. Um, so I don't expect answers from me about how, how much stuff costs or, you know, well, how do you get your LTVA pass? Because I am a strong proponent of, of uh, encouraging people, if, the, if you have the wanderlust, then follow it and see where it leads. See what you learn, because... You know, I did yoga twice a day for 20 years. I didn't, I looked like an idiot when I first started. I didn't know how to do yoga. I didn't read, I'd not read any books on yoga, didn't know anything about it. And uh, I had a lot of judgments and, and I had a lot of, made a lot of mistakes. But after 20 years, you know, I, I can tell you how to do yoga and, and be very happy with that. And it's a complex thing to learn how to do for a lot of reasons. This is the same thing. Um, you can watch YouTube videos all day. You can look up every question that you have. You can uh, read books. You can rip stuff out of your vehicle, whatever it is, and take the seats out or you whip, rip the crap out of your ambulance or your bus or whatever it is you do. Build a new thing. And if you like doing that, good for you. But um, to me, if it's within you to do this, um, do it because you want to do it and damn the torpedoes, just like the, the YouTube, you know, Peter's like, you got to do this. Okay. You know, fine. I, I, I'm not going to post, uh, surveys. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, ask people what kind of content they want because I can create enough content. 
on my own without asking people what kind of content they want. If you like it, great. If you don't, then you don't. Um, I don't like that I can't edit this. I have a lot of vocal ticks, and I'm going to really have to watch as I do this. That's just an aside. As far as the rest of it is concerned, one of the other things we talked about in this podcast, and we also talked about uh, in the Peter Sant Santanella video uh, off grid, was certain people who promote the nomad lifestyle as the natural state of man, that somehow we nomads are actually hunter-gatherers. And we're kind of like Native Americans on the plains circa uh, 1400 or something. And I think that's ridiculous. Um, first of all, without, and, and, he, and this guy is telling people, hey, everyone should do this. You should quit your job back in the jungle, as he refers to back in the world. And you should run out and become a nomad because this is for everyone. It's not. It's not for everyone. Some people can do it and they love it. Some people really struggle. And I've seen people come out living in their cars and uh, really struggling because they were unprepared. I got prepared, even though I'd had camping experience. I mean, I, know, I had camped for years. I, I know how to camp. Uh, but I was unprepared for the psychological ups and downs, unprepared for the physical ups and downs, and a lot of the other logistical issues that you deal with that you may not have those problems. You may have other problems. And so the only way to know it is to learn it by doing it. It's really not that big deal. You get in a vehicle, you get a vehicle, you get in a vehicle and you drive. <laughs> and then you go places. You go to Bureau of Land Management. You go to Forest Service places. And over time, you talk to people and you learn things. And the reason we were poking fun, for example, at the bus people, the hippies, or the van life people, uh, uh, or whatever, is because this is what we do when we sit around the fire. But you're also in the process of poking fun at people. Well, why do they have that army? Why do they have that rig? Why do they do it that way? Why do they do it this way? Because you're in there and you're out there. And when you're talking to people around the fire, well, you know, that's... That's what you talk about, and that's the learning price. It's like getting a master's degree in doing this. And the only, I really believe that the best way to learn it is to do it, and I don't believe that people should be exhorted to do this because it's, quote-unquote, man's natural state. I believe human beings, as I call it, are intermodal. We can do a lot of things, and we can do a lot of things at the same time. Yeah, 10,000 years ago, we were hunter-gatherers, and I'm sure that those guys were like, we got to find a better way to do this. And somebody came up, probably a woman, uh, with the idea of farming. And so the men continued to hunt and the women farmed and then things developed. What do human beings do? We make tools, especially homo sapiens. You know, crows make tools, but homo sapiens, humans in the present state for the last 10,000 years, we have progressed by making tools and because of language, and because of networking, working with each other and community, the communities that we develop. Well, cities are nothing more than large communities. And yes, they have their problems. But I don't want to cast aspersions on city and urban life. I do believe, especially in suburbia, there are pressures on people today that didn't exist 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. Certainly pressures on people in the cities for various reasons. But the answer isn't necessarily, oh, your problem is you're not living your, your, your best life as a nomad because nomads are hunter-gatherers and human beings are designed to be hunter-gatherers. I talked about a little about that because I wanted to clarify some of those points in this most recent podcast, uh, the uh, uh, reactivating my YouTube channel, because I wanted to go over some of the stuff that we talked about in, in the video and, and lay it out. And uh, I talked about uh, Rousseau, who is the, the philosopher who, the French philosopher who is essentially the font of uh, a lot of this hunter-gatherer, the new hunter-gatherer idea that the first fence destroyed the hunter-gatherer lifestyle and it was the best lifestyle in the world. Uh, and versus Hobbes, who believed that there had to be some controlling authority to keep order and maintain resources and husband resources. And in, in almost all these hunter-gatherer tribes, there were uh, the central authorities. They weren't just complete anarchy. And uh, what was the other thing I was thinking about in the, in the midst of all that? I, I'll have to see if I can get back to that mentally because there was another point in there that I wanted to make that I thought was, was really important. Oh, yeah. There's a professor from the University of Nebraska. Incidentally, there's a lecture from him about hunter-gatherer 
uh, on YouTube. So if you just search, you'll be able to find it. And it's a long lecture, but he talks about uh, what they know academically about hunter-gatherer life versus uh, life today. And one of the things that uh, I think uh, goes along with, if you will, the idea of the noble savage is that hunter-gatherer groups, whether it was in Europe or North America or South America or wherever human beings were 10,000 years ago or 100,000 years ago, uh, it was a wonderfully, it was a bucolic, safe, calm, quiet lifestyle, and everyone was happy. If you read the Lewis and Clark uh, logs, which are available, great writing and great information, you will find that there were many, many Native American tribes who were in much better positions than others. Some of them were quite uh, well off and some of them weren't quite well off. It's also true that, uh, so if you take the current population, even with conflict in the world today and all the crime in the big cities and so forth, about 1% of the population of the earth today uh, loses their lives due to violence. In the hunter-gatherer milieu, it was about 12 to 13 percent. So it was a very violent lifestyle, substantially more violent than uh, than I think people really fully understand. Who are pushing the nomad lifestyle as some sort of recreation of the hunter-gatherer uh, ethos? It feels like that when you're doing it, but I don't think it's the natural state of man, and I don't think people should be going out in their cars. Uh, without and throwing caution to the wind and going out in their cars or going out in minivans because you do need a little space. I wouldn't go out in a minivan. Uh, when I first started considering doing this, you know, I had the ambulance because I bought the ambulance to promote the podcast around Minneapolis and St. Paul. That was all that was in my mind. And I had been doing some traveling and my friend Ed Johnson, who got me this, four grand, by the way, uh, said, you know, Bob, we're getting you an ambulance because I was going out in my car and traveling and doing podcasts. And he said, we're getting you this because you'll have heat, you'll have a place, and uh, you'll have a better um, you'll have a better experience um, than just going in your car. I, I would do speed runs to Chicago on my Crown Vic, and I would go down to West Virginia and stuff like that. So, so we got this, and that was the 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 impetus for this thing. I wouldn't go in a car. And people are being told, yeah, just go in your car. You're fine. And the other thing I talked about very briefly, and I, you will find that when I, you watch this and I do content, and, it, and it's based on the podcast, I will do podcasts about the economic stuff that, that are very specific. I won't do politics because I think it's a dead end, but I will, give, I will do very specific, fully prepared podcasts about uh, the economy, giving people a, a broad picture of what's going on in the economy. Uh, and, and so it'll be fun to do a YouTube video after I've done something like that, but I've done enough research, uh, in the last six months to a year, two years, and a lot of work back when I was doing talk radio every day. Uh, uh, I, you know, I know how to evaluate what's relevant, what isn't relevant and add context to broad statements that are put on YouTube in particular that are alarmist about what's going on. But having said that, Given the fact that the money supply is contracting, given the fact that we're having some banking issues, given the fact that interest rates have been raised pretty rapidly, given the fact that commodities are starting to settle in terms of price and we're getting what's called deflationary money in a lot of places, the the possibility that there could be some very traumatic results in the economy are significant. And when that happens, you might find people heading out into the desert and heading out and, and embracing the nomad lifestyle in vehicles and and unprepared. And I told the story, and, and I guess I'll close with this. I told the story of a woman that I ran into two years ago at Plumosa Road, which is a campground um, north of um, uh, Quartzsite that doesn't have any facilities. It's just an open, it's dispersed camping. There's no bathrooms out there. You have to have all that stuff with you or figure out a way to do it. Um, who had fallen down and her face was black and blue. I mean, it was bad. She was about 65, 70 years old. And there was a, I was camping with a bunch of women, Darcy Campos extraordinaire, Sandy, Pam of the Pambulance, and a number of other people. And she had been exhorted to come out and in her car, she had a four-door Honda. And, you know, these women who are, I've since gotten to know all of them, 
Kathy uh, and, and all of them, when they have a problem, they handle it. They are Kim. They're experienced nomads and experienced campers. And, uh, you know, they handle their problems. They told her, you need to go home because you're unprepared for this. So I would just say, if you want to know anything about being a nomad, you've got to start thinking about being prepared, at least knowing how to camp, understanding the desert, uh, what kind of animals are in the desert, uh, if you're going to come out to quartzite. And then just come out and get the lay of the land and, and don't give up uh, your day job. Come out, check it out, go back, and you'll go back and forth a few times until you finally decide, you know what, I want to do this. This is really great. Because it is great. It's like a dream world. It's And it is freedom, freedom, freedom all the time. So uh, I'll talk a, a, about that in, in, in the podcast. And as far as content for this channel, um, you know, it's, it's, it's content... Um, some of it's kind of heavy and complicated. And uh, again, I don't need to put up a poll to ask what people want to hear about. I really don't care. I'm going to do the content that I do on my podcast, and then I'm going to promote it on the YouTube channel. It is what it is. So, uh, yeah, I mentioned that uh, I was going to go down to the flat, and the ground isn't hard down there. So very quickly, we did not have a cold winter here. Uh, and as a it was cold. It was very snowy, but it wasn't cold. As a result, the ground, and this comes from the farmer's, it never got permafrost, so it, it didn't get, it gets spongy in the thaw, and usually you have to wait till even early June before you can go drive your 10,000 pound ambulance down on the flat and you'll get stuck down there in the mud. But that ground down there is very, very dry. So the next one I do, probably in a week or maybe sooner, will be from down on the lake, and it's beautiful and stunning down there. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited about this. I, I, I actually, in a weird way, I'm kind of excited. Sometimes it's just going to be me talking. Here's a quick, like, slow pan of the shed for those of you that want to see it. And there's uh, the outdoor, you know, environment. we got a big door we can slide open. Uh, it's a little chilly out here. I got my hat on, but uh, during the day, it's in the 70s. So thanks for listening to the Bob Davis Podcasts. Look for the links in the description box so you can find the podcast, the audio podcast. Hope that you listen to those. You'll get an idea of why I'm doing that. That's all right there. And thank you for listening and watching YouTube and listening to the Bob Davis Podcast at thebobdavispodcast.com. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.